wrong. Oh! Hey! Uh, who? How about up the back? Can you hear me? Yeah. Just. A little bit more volume. Don't worry. Don't spare the horses. We've got plenty of petrol. And uh, some bikes up here today, I think they even take diesel, so it's not a problem. Where's Happy? Not Happy now. Um, thank you, Piper Joe, for uh, your beautiful playing, and uh, we appreciate you coming up here. Um, and Joe's been supporting us for quite a number of years now. For real. And uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, Firstly, I'd just like to uh, pass on the apologies of uh, Alan and Savant Pratt. They're currently uh, swanning around Europe, heading off to uh, one of the European GMs of the international clubs. And um, so they wish to uh, put their uh, apologies forward for today. And whilst uh, I'm here, everybody has heard about the Southern Cross Poker Run. I don't know if everybody's heard, but there was a, uh, a tragedy a couple of days ago. One of the uh, Capricornia branch members actually lost his life in the accident. And uh, two others of the, on the ride, also from Capricornia, were involved in the accident. And they're currently in the RBWH. Um, Joy is in uh, just a ward. Um, so she'll be released soon. And Pat, I'm not sure if they're partners. Uh, but he's undergoing surgery. So um, if anybody's around the RBWH and is able to go and visit a couple of uh, fellow club members, uh, get on to uh, Bob Holland. He's the president of Capricornia branch. Uh, if you can't do that, just myself. I am Foggy from Lockyer, a, uh, a call, and uh, I'll get the details to you. Oh, yes. Hey. Yeah, and Spangles uh, from Warwick Ranch also had a downer. Um, he was dodging, I think, a roo or a, uh, a cow on the road or something on the road and uh, lost it. The uh, bikes and trailer is uh, not doing too good. Uh, he's much better. He's had a bit of surgery um, and I think he's at, currently at Toowoomba Base Hospital. Um, so he um, should be back uh, fully fit at work, so Elaine reckons, uh, in six weeks' time. So we didn't hear how Spangles was, but we do know he's going back to work in six weeks, so he can't be too bad. <laughs> so it all depends how long he takes to heal. <laughs> Her version, yeah. you got to love Elaine. She, yeah, Spangles is good. OK. Yeah, so he's got a couple of character slashes on his face and a broken collarbone. So this, this uh, gashes on his face will just add a bit more character. And... Um, uh, in our greetings, I'd like to uh, pay special thanks to uh, Ray and Di Parker um, for their continued effort they put into these gardens. Uh, Ray and his mini mover equipment is responsible for where we are today, and without such, we would not have this beautiful location to uh, hold our memorial service. Uh, Ray's um, not only it does not stop with his machinery, it's his foresight and how he has uh, redeveloped all the stones and these pathways uh, that at least we have some shade uh, that's available to us, especially on the hotter days that we have our Memorial Day. So um, thank you to uh, Ray and Di Parker for that. And then on that, we also must thank ourselves, a lot of us um, that have come up, over he up to here in the past nine years that I've been... Uh, uh, involved with the gardens and uh, for the uh, sweat uh, that we've invested in helping Ray do all this. Um, a lot of us have come up here nearly every year, some only make it once or twice in a couple of years period. doesn't matter. Every time somebody comes up here and helps, it's an addition to the gardens and it means one less thing we have to do. So anytime you see the uh, call go out for a working bee, this is what we're doing up here. And on that, we thank SAPAR of Ipswich, uh, landscape suppliers, for the mulch. Um, over the years, they've donated lots of cubic meterage of mulch that go onto these gardens. And without them, uh, we would not have them the way they are. We just could not afford 
to buy the mulch that is required on these gardens without sponsorship and donation. Um, and also to the lovely <coughs> Karen Miller uh, for her uh, taking and organising the uh, name plaques for our boards um, and to honour uh, everybody who's ridden on for uh, in the last 12 months. So thank you, Karen. And and thank you everyone else. And I'd like to introduce Lizzie. Lizzie, what, what's your surname? Panel, that's right. Uh, oh, sorry, Lizzie's a leaning post. But she's also the daughter of Doc. Uh, yes, everybody knows David Cox from Redcliffe Branch. Uh, Doc is the inspiration for the gardens. And... Uh, he wanted somewhere to be buried. He was actually self-gratifying um, is that he thought of these gardens so he'd never be forgotten. Just that he had to involve the Ulysses Club and get us all behind him. I will never forget him. That's why we've got Doc Rock. <coughs> <laughs> so every time you come up here, you can have a sit on Doc. <laughs> so, but Lizzie um, will be doing our service today. Um, also, the Salvation Army. Um, you've had uh, sausages and breakfast over there, thanks to the uh, three cores of Ipswich. We have the Ipswich, the Bundamba and Goodna, and um, they all pitched together um, to put on the breakfast for us. And the couple that I walked here with, they were in locker shirts, but they were also Salvation Army officers, now retired, and also our branch chaplains of the Lockyer branch, Bruce and Margaret, and they ensure that everything runs smoothly for all of us. And that's it for my list. Yo. Oh, and pins. We have 20 pins left available for the, this Memorial Day. So don't forget to see the Rainbow Girl and her husband, Rick. So, hey, it's easier to find you, event. So uh, don't forget to see them before we leave. Uh, and now I'll move on to a message from the National President. Okay. These words were put together by uh, Jen Woods on Friday night, so they're fresh out of uh, her, her memory. Thank you all who have gathered in together to remember and pay respects to those Ulysses Club members and friends who have ridden on. We keep them in our hearts and know that they ride along with us. Our lives are better and richer for having known them. This year in particular we remember Rick Bedford, member 7481, Life member 12, who passed away in June. Rick left a large footprint in the Ulysses Club and we miss him but know he is now at peace and pain free. Many of you will have had friends who you know through the club who have ridden on ahead. We are with you at this time. Nationwide the Memorial Day rides begin after a proposal put to the then National Committee some years ago by member Dick Lindsay and you are gathered today to remember those members who have ridden on, especially we remember old number one, Stephen Durnley. Coming together like this also reinforces the strength of the club, that we have been able to make new friends and share new experiences. How very lucky we are. And let us not forget all the good things that this club does. UCAF, Mayote, and all the community support our own Ulysses Club community and the greater community, given in many ways by branches and members. Thanks to those of you who have organised Memorial Day rides and gatherings. Have a safe trip home. Kind regards, Jen Woods, our National President. And now over to Lizzie. Thank you again for inviting me back. I want to make sure you can all hear me. Yep, just let me know if I get too loud. Sometimes being a loud little Italian, things get a bit crazy. Normally I stand up here and I have a book and I read from my book and I read my ceremony that I've taken ages to write. But every single time I sat at my computer, I couldn't, I couldn't come up with something. Because what I wanted to do was have a conversation. And now I've probably lost 20% of the men in here because you're like, great. Another woman talking at me. 
but I wanted it to be authentic. And I wanted it to be personal. Because what I really want to talk to you about is you. Every year we all come here for a reason. Stop a chisel, get a badge, have a chat, have a yarn, get on our bike, blow the cobwebs out of those pipes, add a name to the board. Remember the names that we've added to the board. And one year I spoke to you about the importance of the memorial gun. And another year I spoke to you about how life is like a train ride. And then one year I spoke about mateship. But we never talk about us. You. Every single individual person here. You. How do you fill your cup? When we lose somebody, when a club loses somebody, we all rally around the family, we rally around the close friends to help them be strong and give them strength. But what do we leave for us? Are you like me? Where you've got your little suitcase. Remember those little suitcases you used to have at school, the ports, the little brown ones with the little clips? And you go to school with your bag? And so you're carrying around with you and you're taking that from somebody and you're taking that from somebody and you keep packing it in that suitcase and then all of a sudden you're sitting on that suitcase and you're shelling it down and you're clipping it off. We could call it baggage. We could call it whatever you want. But we're carrying that with us and then one day it just goes... <coughs> and if you're like me, it's usually at the grocery store at Woolies. Hi, how are you? <laughs> well, that cat shack for shoe and the bloody dog food on the carpet and the bloody kids are driving me nuts and everything goes in by the end and I'm sick of life and the work's driving me nuts and I'm good, thanks, tell you. Meanwhile, we check out chicks going, <laughs> didn't sign up for this. True? Is there everybody else, does anybody else recognise that? You feel that little boot inside of you and next thing you know you just pop and it's like the littlest thing. We're coming up to Are You OK Day. I think it's Thursday. But I want you to find something that fills your cup, something that replenishes you, because without you, your family, your friends, your club can't be. We need you. Recently at work, we lost a prisoner. I work in a prison. I never knew this prisoner. He died under unfortunate circumstances. And I didn't think that that would affect me, but it did. For two whole days, I was really sad. I never managed him. I never looked after him. I think once I handed him his card, but it really affected me. And I think it's just from everything. And if we don't find an avenue to vent that everything, we crash. So I want you to, like, if you feel as though you don't have anyone to talk to, if you can't talk to the person next to you or a stranger down the street or one of your club members, find me. I'm happy to talk to you and I can talk under water. And I can listen. And wet the men. There you go, Dad got it, wet the men, and I have since the day I was born. But I want you guys to find something for you. Whether that's singing, dancing, going to the gym. I don't recommend that. I did that this week and I cannot move a muscle. I have to hold on and sit down. But find something that fills your cup. Whether that's going for a ride. Whether that's talking to a family member. Whether that's having a facial. Even you gentlemen. Get your beards trimmed. Do something. <laughs> Comb it. I don't know. So my concern is everybody that's here. Mental health today is a serious topic. Even when you feel ever so slightly unhappy, that's still mental health, isn't it? We've still got to look after ourselves. Because we are the most important people. We keep each other going. Every day. And I think that's what I wanted to talk to you about because... Like, I've been working with a group that does post-traumatic stress for people in emergency services. And it just comes to realise that even just how having a chat to somebody can save a life. This year I know that group saved three people from just having a chat. And I know that we're all here to remember those that have gone. But have we thought about how it affects us? I know that each year we get here and we go, Thank God that wasn't me. I've survived another year. Because how many dickheads are out there on the road? Every time we get on our bike. God knows I rode last week and I held on to dear life because of some idiot that was eating a breakfast and putting on a mascara at the same time. So I'm glad to be here today. So next year I want to see you all here with your cup full. And that's probably the most important thing to me because right now, knowing that every single person here has got somebody to turn to will make me happy. 
So if you ever feel like you need someone to talk to, find me. Find one of these people here. And that's it. That's the, probably the most important message I have today. This could have gone to shit, really. But my husband, he was really scared. He said, when you write something, it's beautiful, and you stand up there and you talk beautifully. But when you talk on your own, you sound like a munted potato. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. I sometimes can't get through a sentence. I'll be like, huh? Talking on her, 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 her. And he's like, finish a sentence. So hopefully today it wasn't too terrible. And if we've got, <laughs> yes, I hope I got a little bit of a message to somebody out there. But yeah, that's my biggest thing today is about self-care, self-love, re-energizing and find something that helps you and that you feel passionate about. And be honest about it. Don't be scared. Don't be scared, gentlemen and ladies. You don't need to stand there and think, I got this shit when you don't. Don't think, I'm a man and I need to hold on to this and I'll be right and I don't need to cry and I don't need to talk to somebody. Because you gentlemen are the biggest risk factor. And we all like your ugly, little, baldy, bearded head. Alright? <laughs> 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 so that's it. I'm going to drop the mic before I get into trouble and get a kick up the ass. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lizzie. That was special. Well done. And it is a very strong message, and I reckon 10 people of you, somebody is suffering. And uh, there's somebody that's standing right in front of you holding a microphone. That fits Lizzie's words. So, I am a sufferer. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'd like to call Scalesy uh, down to the mic, please. Thank you all for coming along today. Yeah. Put the mic up to your mouth, Scarsy. Sorry about that. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Radio. Uh, thank you all for gathering to remember the writers that have written on the clubs. Sorry, I'll keep trying to hold it up there. It's on a necklace. <laughs> now I feel really embarrassed. Okay, so these names will be written out in no particular order. If anyone has a member of their club or someone who knows someone from the Ulysses who has not been mentioned, please do so. And we'll start this with. <coughs> Starting with 37723, Neil Goff, Goffy, Gimby. I'd also like everyone to remove their headdress. Thank you. 36429, Bob, Fleming, Stan, from Bundaberg Branch. 582, Fred Phillips, Fred, from Lockyer. 7429, Desmond, Ballinger, Des, from the Darling Downs. 23179, Ron Wilson, from Stanford Branch. 24524, Barry Raisin, or Darby, and the Tweed Border. 57474, Alan Rickard, Ridge, and the Darling Downs. 3567, Reg Williams, also from the Darling Downs. 38206, Bruce Watson, from Bundaberg. 13212, Kevin, Kentwell, Sarge, from the Glasshouse Mountains. And of course, 7481, Rick Bedford, life member number 12 from the Redlands Branch. 63886, John Steer, from the Sunshine Coast. Does anybody else have a member that we have not mentioned? <laughs> Thank God for that. We can all bow our heads today. Okay. 
Okay. One minute of silence for these uh, members, please. One more thing that I did forget. Um, I'd like to invite anyone up that would like to talk about a member who has ridden on. And on maybe a story or two 
to share with us and lighten the mood a little bit for everyone. Is there anyone that would like to talk on behalf of a member who's written on? Bundaberg Ranch, our uh, volunteer, ever caring, Kayleen Charlie. Bruce was uh, jovial, caring, creative, problem solver, who made everybody in the ranch feel good and feel happy. And we we're all very sad to lose him after a very short illness. Right on, Bruce. Can I introduce Heather Fleming? Bob's partner, say a short message about Bob. Yes, in 1991, Bob acquired his dream machine, Harley Davidson Sportster. And as soon as he saw it, that's what he called it, his dream machine. His son, Terence, works in Bundaberg and met a, one of his friends called Hendo. And Hendo got in touch with Bob because uh, the Ulysses were having the Odyssey and Gunda Windy and it wasn't long before Hendo introduced himself over the phone to my husband and my husband became a Ulysses member and he thoroughly enjoyed the company of the Ulysses at the Odyssey especially going through the small towns like Texas and Inglewood because he played football against these fellows. And uh, when they came to the barbecues, when the uh, group went through, you know, 70 odd bikes, and the town folk, you don't know what that does to the little towns. When you Ulysseans come along, it really lifts their spirits. They love coming around looking at the bikes. And um, some of my um, husband's um, ex-football partners that he played against, came up and recognised him and saying, what, you got a bike? What, are you a Lissy? <laughs> oh, he put a feather in his cap. Well, that was just brilliant. He really enjoyed it. And um, he retired in 2001. He was a rider with the um, Bundy Rum City Riders, which he thoroughly enjoyed. He was a bloke larger than life. He loved a joke, and he loved telling jokes, I can assure you. And he really enjoyed those rides around the towns of Bundaberg, joining in the laughter on the weekends and they started their Thursday morning rides and their Tuesday night meetings the first month, the first Tuesday of each month was their um, meetings. But it was the company, you know, when you retire and it's a whole new lifestyle and he thoroughly enjoyed the company of the fellow Ulysseans and he really missed that company as his health declined and he couldn't go on their rides anymore he would just ride around Bundaberg to the Burnet Heads or um, Bagara or um, Elliot Heads but he kept on riding because he just loved his bike and um, he knew his, he wasn't listening to his body and of course he put it down and um, when the bike got healed and he got healed he knew it was time to sell it and that was one of the saddest things he ever had to do was push that Harley Davison up on the back of a trailer. He stood out on the footpath and watched it go out of sight. But I thank you all for this memorial because we lost him in November last year and I know that he's riding up there on his dream machine with all the other blokes that have ridden on. And it's a joy that you have a, a memorial like this because it does mean a lot to me and on, on behalf of myself and my dear family, I thank you very, very much. Very lovely words. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to talk on behalf of someone who has written on? Thank you.
I'd just like to say I'm uh, Linda Carey from Darling Down Ranch, and we've lost, a, uh, I think, three members this year, but I wanted to particularly um, speak about Reg and welcome his uh, members of his family who have come today to pay their respects and join our ceremony. But uh, Reg was a, a greatly loved and respected elder of Darling Downs Branch. He was a member since 1991. And I, I moved to Toowoomba in uh, about 2011. And Reg made me feel very welcome. He went out of his way to welcome me to the branch. He loved his BMWs and um, stories that I've heard about him. He, he had a prosthetic leg and I've heard a story of how he's pulled up on the side of the road and and his leg has gone flying and he's had to yell out, you know, Kerry, will you bring my leg over here so he can get off his bike? <laughs> um, so he's, with his deteriorating health, uh, he finally had uh, lost his licence in the last couple of years and so he had a mobility scooter and he, you could see Reg, he had a top box on the back and his Ulysses stickers on the back so he was a very passionate Ulyssian. So I'd like, just like to say right on Reg. And uh, just on behalf of the Lockyer branch, uh, you heard from Scalzi, uh, with member also uh, Fred Phillips uh, member was at 462. Fred. 582. 582. Yeah, so uh, Fred uh, joined the club way uh, early in the piece. Yeah, but uh, I think he was still something like three or four years after the formation of the club. Uh, so that's how long it took to get up to uh, the top of the 500 numbers. But after that, that's when the club came on. Now, Fred was an interesting um, Ulyssian. He used to go to the rallies, the AGMs, the Odysseys, uh, did all that, lived in Ipswich. And, um, you know, he started off down in Sydney, moved to uh, Brisbane Branch, um, then migrated out to uh, Lockyer Branch, uh, 20, we've been around for 24, 25 years. Um, so, but he was a Ulyssian of the, uh, the best, the highest honour. And um, he was a, a, a cheeky old bugger. Um, he uh, used to ride a Bergman, 650 Bergman, and I would uh, put 50 bucks on the bar if uh, most of you would have been able to keep up with him, let alone uh, outdo him around corners up and down hills. Uh, he could ride the uh, rubber off that Bergman like you've never seen done. Uh, he was forced by his wife a few years ago to give up riding because he was getting too old and too silly. And, um, but every time he walked down the street and the bike went past, he'd end up with a sore neck and she finally conceded, you haven't got it out of your system, have you? So she, after two years of forcing him to be a walker on the footpath, allowed him to buy another Bergman. So he conceded to uh, her fears and bought a 400. I don't know what the difference was between a 400 or a 650. They went just as far as round corners. Um, the, he got his bike uh, and his first ride back uh, with us. We also have a gentleman just uh, through the trees there. It was his first ride with us. So he was the newest Ulyssian um, in the club, along with probably one of the last of the oldest riding member within the club, um, which was a bit of an honour to be on that ride because that was the last one Fred was able to do with us. Um, but because uh, he was hoping that, because he rode so well, that he'd actually go back to the doctor and get his licence back. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't think he got out on the bike too much after that, and he did just pass away just before Christmas. So um, he and many others on that board, and hopefully uh, we'll remember ourselves in the future, a long time into the future, with uh, stories similar to that, but probably not as uh, adventurous, because I don't think this is the day and age for that type of stuff. So, but is there anybody else that wishes to speak on behalf of any member? Okay, that's fine. Now, on the back of your... No, that's what it is. Down the bottom, down the bottom. Thank you. Hey, you wouldn't think I'd design this one. Okay. Um, Jake's going to get the uh, other speaker up and running. And um, yeah, we'll uh, all have a bit of a singer song. 